Hey sweet loves, welcome to part four of my Mercury Retrograde Retreat Debrief. If you haven't already, go watch parts one, two, and three, please. They all build off of one another, so it's really important to actually watch them in sequential order and gain that knowledge the way that I intended it. So today I'm talking about what you can expect from me moving forward after Mercury Retrograde, because like I mentioned in the other videos, I feel like I'm coming out of this Mercury retrograde like a totally different person. Like I've learned so much in the last three weeks. I've learned so unbelievably much and I'm so grateful for this Mercury retrograde experience. Like I mentioned in part three, if every Mercury retrograde can be like this, like I'm so fucking here for it. If I can make these quantum leaps in my personal development, in my mindset, in my understanding, in my surrender, like I learned through this process of losing those two videos and having to re-record them. Through all of that, if I can make these quantum leaps, like I can't even imagine, like I'm not there yet on what that process is gonna look like and, and where these quantum leaps are gonna take me, but like I'm here for it. Like that part of the surrendering, I'm really, really here for. The rest I'm still learning. I'm a stubborn Aries, so let's just like bear with me here. So what you can expect from me moving forward. During Mercury Retrograde, I learned that a study found 95% of your success is determined by your social network, by who you interact with, what content you consume. So I like I mentioned in part three, really became a boundary enforcing queen. I probably should have mentioned this in part three and I think I did the last time I recorded it, but I made people's reactions so much worse in my head than I thought they were gonna be. I still took the action, I still enforced my boundaries, but most people that I interacted with were so gracious in me having my boundaries and me enforcing my boundaries. And I'm really going to continue that moving forward. I'm so grateful for my business coach, Rachel Rogers. I am in her membership program and she said that it's actually better to not even set boundaries if you're not going to enforce them because enforcing them is actually the more crucial part of the boundary setting process because if you don't enforce your boundaries, you're just showing people that you're gonna say this one thing but you're gonna go back on your word on yourself. And I've been doing that a lot personally I mean, not anymore, but I, I realized with reflection that I was doing that a lot in the past, personally and in my business, going back on my boundaries. So moving forward and what I really learned in Mercury Retrograde is that's no bueno. So we're stopping that shit. We're not doing that anymore. We are setting boundaries and we are enforcing our boundaries and having the faith and trusting in the process that the people we interact with are going to receive those boundaries with grace. Boundaries just means I love myself enough to lay down this line and to not cross it and to hold some space for myself. And anybody who doesn't see a boundary as choosing myself and choosing to love myself, they're not my people. I am here to make the world a more authentic, a more loving place. And if you're not with me to do that, and more importantly, if you're not willing to do the work it takes to do your part in that and to, cr and to help create a world like that, then this place is not for you. And I'm really stepping into my standards. I'm really stepping into my boundaries. I'm really stepping into my power and saying, these are my values. This is what I stand for. If you don't, there's the door. That is that on an energetic level. Now going back to that 95% statistic, with that stat, just being in my energy, just being in my network, just consuming my content, means that you will already be making progress and making steps to living a more authentic life and to realizing how much more easy life could be for you through osmosis proximity. Now imagine what that's like 
actually working with me, actually learning from me, actually having that energetic exchange of you investing in my knowledge, my education, my energy, and receiving that energetic exchange back. So now I wanna talk about what started this whole thing, right? My very first title, I'm breaking up with Instagram. I love Instagram as a platform. I love being on Instagram. I love interacting on Instagram. But again, really showing how important this reflection process is, had I actually been reflecting on my business and really diving into my analytics and into my statistics and seeing where my revenue was being generated from, I would have seen that when I made the switch from predominantly promoting myself in Facebook groups to using Instagram as my main form of marketing, I would have seen a huge decline in my revenue generated. And I'm just being honest with you about this. And at first I thought it was COVID related. And you know what, maybe maybe there is a portion of it that was COVID related. However, I know a lot of people that made a lot of money during COVID, so I'm only gonna give it a slight percentage of justification, but I really think it has to do with my mode of marketing. And I just don't think that Instagram converts as well for me as Facebook groups did. However, I didn't enjoy Facebook groups, right? And I didn't go into business for myself to, to always be doing or to predominantly be doing something that I didn't enjoy doing. Obviously there are things in my business that I have to do as I'm building it and get my business to a point where I can then hire other people to do the things that I don't like to do but for like my marketing purposes to really be draining myself day in and day out doing something I didn't enjoy doing was not in alignment with me which is why I switched to Instagram because I really enjoyed being on the platform however it does not convert for me as well as Facebook did now I'm not saying I'm going back to Facebook but what I am saying is that I'm changing my marketing tactics and I've mentioned you know dropped hints very obviously on my Instagram that I am starting a YouTube channel. So hopefully you're watching this on YouTube, but I have been posting these Mercury retrograde retreat debriefs on my IGTV as a transitional phase to let my Instagram followers know that my juicy content is not gonna be on Instagram anymore. My juicy content is going to be predominantly on my email list and on my YouTube channel. So if you want to continue interacting and receiving my really juicy content, you're either gonna wanna sign up for my email list or you're gonna wanna subscribe to my YouTube channel or both, why not, right? But what I'm going to be using Instagram for moving forward is kind of a behind the scenes look because I still love showing up on stories. I still love interacting on Instagram. I still love the platform. It just can't be my main marketing strategy. So my two main marketing strategies are gonna be my email list and my YouTube channel. What I'm going to be using Instagram for is predominantly behind the scenes as well as promoting those things, right? So when a new YouTube video comes out, out, I'm going to be posting on Instagram, signaling people to go to my YouTube channel. Or if I write a really amazing email, I'll maybe put a little snippet of it on Instagram and saying something along the lines of like, if you love this piece of content, sign up for my email list because this is the juicy content that goes out to my email list. You can subscribe to my email list by downloading the free awareness manual at the link in the description below or if you're watching this on IGTV at the link in my bio or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can hit the little subscribe button below and if you're watching this on IGTV, again, you can go to the link in my bio to reach my YouTube channel. Okay, mi amores, what we can expect from my business moving forward. Authentic Soul Maps, which if you are not aware, are my version of a human design reading where you fill out an intake form of what you would like some insight on, what your goals are, what you need help with, what you're struggling with, that kind of thing. And then I walk through your human design chart. I introduce you to your human design chart. I give you some really amazing translations of your human design chart and how that shows up in to your life and 
answering your intake form or providing you some information to reach those goals or to help you make shifts or whatever it is that you're searching for. So you get a one hour recording of me going through your chart and then you also get a PDF accompaniment that includes some helpful reminders, some key notes, some affirmations, some journal prompts and all of that kind of stuff. You get that as well. The authentic soul maps are going to continue to be on a wait list only. If you want to join the wait list, you can go to the link in my bio or the description below. And I do want to highlight that authentic soul maps, I believe are probably going to start phasing out in 2022. So if you haven't joined the wait list, I would do so now. The next thing that I want to kind of highlight is that I'm launching a new free webinar which will explain the nine practical steps you need to reconnect to your authentic soul. If you want information on that, make sure that you sign up for my email list because again, I'm gonna be predominantly promoting the webinar on my email list. I'm also reopening my one-on-one -on -one coaching practice but I am not really calling it coaching, I'm calling it facilitation. That really resonates a lot more with me because that's what I believe I do. I facilitate your human design journey, your human design experiment, right? I am here to utilize my knowledge, my information, my training, my certifications to facilitate your journey to helping you reconnect to your authentic soul, to feel more authentic and to really help you make life feel easier, like things are actually falling into place for you. I'm reopening my one-on-one -on -one spots because like I mentioned in part two, I have really streamlined my framework in my business and what I actually do with my clients. And so I wanna bring on some one-on-one -on -one clients up until the end of the year, up until the end of 2021, to be able to run through this process before I launch my new offer in 2022, which is going to be the main focus of my business and the main way to actually work with me moving forward. There we have it. I cannot believe I thought I could do this retreat debrief in one go. I'm so grateful that I listened to my gut, my authority, and I broke it up into four parts. It was so much information. It was so much to get through, but I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about anything mentioned in any of the four parts, please either comment them down below, send me a DM, send me an email, contact me in some way, shape or form. I'm here to be of service. I would love to have this conversation with you and really just help you reconnect to that authentic soul. You are so beautiful. I love you so much and I cannot wait to help you feel more authentic and to help you make your life feel easier. Just saw 11-11. Nope. They all build off of one another. They all built meh, 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 meh. <laughs> three, three, three. There's an angel number. And enforcing my battery, my batteries, worrying about what my, what not. They all build off of one another. One another. One another. They all build off of one another, so it's really important to do that. <laughs>